and then to the capacity to really be for 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 good patient and for, for, for everybody to use. So this pipeline usually can take a few hours if if it's everything easy or can take weeks, years, sometimes. So it has it's very sometimes you have to be careful of what the question what the questions you are trying to ask. Because if you don't have good questions that uh, need this information, probably this is a lot of a lot of uh, a waste of time. This is usually very expensive to go from here to here. And you, you have to be sure that you have good questions and you will use this information. Uh, so maybe I should just have an idea of how we crystallize macromolecules, why we need a display. Crystals and how to solve a search and find information you get. So, what is a crystal? A crystal is an other aggregate. So, macromolecules can form amorphous aggregates, and this is going to be a, we don't have any order that this is a bad sign or it's, not, it's useless for us. Or a crystal that all the molecules are in phase. But I told you uh, previously that we have a all the molecules uh, align in, in, in the same position, in the same orientation, and this is the ideal condition. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that the interactions between different molecules, the crystals, are very weak, and unspecific, and usually very few interactions between the molecules. So we need pure protein just to avoid contamination and, 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 and affect the, the crystal growth. But also because uh, these crystals are very fragile. So uh, uh, if you compare it with small molecule crystals, like salts, it is very hard and can be virtually broke. This, uh, even at the here, some crack. With protein crystal, this is very fragile. And we, we have to uh, fish this crystal, uh, because of the virtual, we have to fish this crystal. And, the, the, we have to be very careful of how to manipulate this. this, this uh, so, and we have to, to find in which condition these proteins crystallize. And this is completely in favor. So, uh, we, we, we don't know, we can, cannot predict in which condition the protein will crystallize. And we have to search and we'll see which kind of parameters we have to move on to, 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 to see or to track so what is a crystal? And this is an important concept. Well, a crystal is a motif in crystal lab. So and we should remember is that in, in a crystal you have a unit cell, and this unit cell is repeated in the crystal by translation. And we can uh, mathematically create a crystal only by translation. So we have a an and remember that it was so why do we need crystal? Because the crystal is a signal and a flag. So if you have a lot of molecules in, in the same orientation and we put the crystals in a different we we will amplify the signal of one molecule for the uh, position of So how do you slice it? <coughs> Um, we can draw what we call phase drive blocks. That is, protein concentration in, 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 in the precipitant in an hour. And the precipitant can be like uh, salt, can be soil product, the quality we call different kind of precipitant we'll see. And the idea is uh, put the protein in a condition that is uh, in a super saturation state. So, to, to, to in a condition where it's less uh, solid because we want to form a solid. So if we, if, we, if, if, if we have an idea of this phase diagram, we, if, we, if we put the protein too concentrated, we will probably go to the precipitation zone and form uh, an amorphous aggregate. So we have to, this kind of, 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 of diagrams are very useful because we can see if the protein is uh, 
too low the concentration or the precipitate is precipitate too low or if you, if you go to the amorphous precipitation. So changing the protein concentration and the precipitate, we can travel to different parts of the diagram to try to find the sum with the, the sum the inflation sum. And the inflation sum we would like to find some by typical method that you uh, thermodynamically go to the formation of Macroscopic crystals. So, how we do this? We use different methods. Uh, for example, the vapor diffusion or dialysis, and there are another uh, Just to, to have an idea how it works, if we do a vapor uh, diffusion experiment, we will see that we start with a protein. The, the idea is we put here a, a, a solution in the reservoir. And we put our protein at uh, a drop of our protein here. And we mix, for example, two microliters of our protein solution with the reserve. Two microliters of reserve. So with the same certain velocity, the, vapor, the water will go to the reserve if the concentration of the residue is higher, is really high. And the protein and, and, and this, all this, the, the, the component of this drop, they, Increase the concentration, so the protein concentration will increase, and also the, the crystallization age will increase with time. If the reservoir has a certain composition that uh, stops it, its experiment, it reaches the limit here, we don't have crystal because we, we didn't go to the location zone. So we have to test different reservoir solutions to try to go to this place. This is important, and we cannot predict when it will come. And if we if we look, uh, if we go further and, and start to, to form nuclei, the, the protein concentration will decrease, and this is because the protein will go out of the solution to form crystals. And this is the basic idea of vapor diffusion experiment crystallization. We can have different, uh, for example. In, in, in dialysis, we will have different kinds of, of, of trajectories, but the idea is to go to one place, the inflation zone. And, and what, what kind of condition we have to search? And, 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 and first place, the amount of protein in the sample we have is, is, is probably a, 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 a limit, and so we have to use, usually we use robots, crystallization robots, to try to miniaturize the, the amount of sample. Uh, and the idea is we have to test different protein concentration. And we usually we do as high as possible, but sometimes you have to, you, you note that perhaps it's too high, you have to lower. We can use different types of precipitants that we can put in the controls, is ammonium sulfide, solvents, concentrated salt, alcohol, etc. We can use like additives, uh, small molecules that even is, for example, ligands, ADP, ADP, etc. We can use different buffer composition and pH and temperature. So if, if you look at this, we have too many variables to, to, to do it in a systematic way and, and, and search all the studies. So you should want to select a few of them and try to make a first screen and see some hits then uh, optimize it. Usually we don't have the best crystals in the screen. You have to use these hints and try to change. If you have a crystal in tech 400, you have to optimize and change the concentration, change the pH, and try to, 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 to uh, just to have the, the best crystal you can have as fast as 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 so here are some pictures of, of, of the screen. You can have clear drops. This tells you that the protein was too low. You can have hair. This is contamination, but uh, it's very common. And you, sometimes it's, it's good, because sometimes it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it helps to grow the nutrient. And well, you can have uh, precipitants or, or phase separations or something like that. And what we are looking for is this kind of crystals. 
big three dimensional crystals. Uh, you can have different kinds of crystals, uh, maybe crystal in uh, very small crystals that are difficult to detect. But sometimes, if you look at this and you try to, for example, lower the protein concentration, you can have a smaller number of nuclei and try to draw bigger crystals. You can have little plates or three dimensional crystals. You can have different <coughs> pathologies and probably. Uh, And these pathologies, problems in the crystal, you can be more difficult to solve. You have like twinning or a lot of a lot of, uh, of, of, of things that can do the process more or less. Different. So, what if, if you think the how the crystal packing? That's the question. If the the size of the drop or the or the metals is also a variable, I mean maybe yes. the the rate at which the diffusion. Yes, that's pretty bad. So the idea is how you move in the phase diagram. So you, if, if you put, for example, uh, two microliters and two microliters here, or four or four, it will be at different velocity. Okay. Or if you put two or four, two plus four, it's going to be in a different position. Okay. And so you screen that as well? Uh, you screen that as well when, when you are on a, on a at, uh, when you want to narrow the we do it as simple as possible uh -huh. and if you if you don't have any heat you start to do different ways yeah. you start to sometimes you change the protein concentration you to start with the, the highest protein concentration as possible you screen and you see that are too clear so you raise it if you don't have anything you can put uh, two on four and try to see what happens or, or change the screen. This is a third place also to change the, the kind of screen you use. For example, you can use green special especially for for salts and specific specs or so. and you can also use uh, oil here just to change also the the, the, the how the, the the system goes to the interface. So there are too many variables to to, to do this experiment. But I don't think it's easy to crystallize when we have crystals everywhere and it's difficult to use it. So, so, well, one thing uh, I already told is how the, crystal, how the molecules are packed in the crystal. So, I told you that they are weak, and usually in a small number. And if you look at crystal of macromolecules with the proteins, you have big holes of solvent. So you have high solvent content, and that's the reason that if you, if you put the crystal in the air, probably the crystal will die because of, of deepertation. So you have to be careful with this. You have, very, you have to manipulate it very carefully. And also, you need to. Remember that this is we have a unit cell and it's a motif and we can reproduce the crystal by translation. Many times we have different elements, symmetry elements in the crystal. And if you download the PDB to try to see the structure, you have to remember this because not always we have one molecule that's in the unit cell, or when you will see that in a symmetric unit. Or the, Sometimes you have many more, and, and, and if you want to see only one molecule, because you, have, you want to analyze only one molecule, you have to take into consideration. Or if you have a complex of four proteins, identical proteins, and, and they are related by a symmetry, in the, in the unit cell, you see only one molecule. But you are interested in the, in the complex. So you have to be very careful and, and, and very understand that in the way you take it with a lot of you saw. You don't solve the, the structure of the molecule, you solve the structure of the crystal. So <coughs> in, the, in the final deposition, you put information of the whole crystal. And this is really important information. And you will see, and, and, and sometimes you can see that information, information that you can get from the interaction between two molecules can be useful and functional and relevant. So I told you that you have the, the, the crystal lattice, and we have one molecule, 
call that asymmetric union because I don't want to be too complicated, but so you have different uh, group space and, and in different restrictions in, in, in the size of the cells and different symmetry elements and can be a bit complicated to explain this in only one yet, in this slide, but you have to remember two things. One is you have an asymmetric unit. This asymmetric unit can be can, we can regenerate the unit cells using symmetry elements. So for example, we can have uh, a two-fold symmetry that with this two-fold symmetry can create this molecule, etc. So I understand some or it's too Okay? So in the PDB we will put the coordinates of only the asymmetric unit. So if you have, if you want to look at everything in the crystal because you are looking for that information, you have to in the PDB we have information, you have to regenerate the unit cell and eventually you can generate all the crystals. So the other question is why we use X ray. So the idea is we need to use a radiation that has uh, a wavelength small enough to see the difference in what we want to see. If you want, if you want the atomic resolution, we need a wavelength that is that allows to discriminate between two atoms that are separated, for example, from 1.5 atoms that is more than this one. So if you if, if, if want to solve an atomic resolution structure, we need to go to the to the X-ray uh, part of the So that is a limitation sometimes because we don't have length to focus the, the X-ray, but with X-ray we can go to very low resolution, uh, high resolution of, of, of the And typically we use between one and three Armstrong uh, of wavelength. In an in-hand source, we have 1.54 less because of the copper, and here we have an X-ray generator this kind of wavelength. And, well, the idea of this step is we have here the X-ray generator uh, and we, in, in, in this part of the, of, of the building we have here we put the crystal this is a crystal in a loop this loop is, is, uh, is how we fish the crystal we have those drops of, of, of the sensation condition and we use this kind of, of tools we have to like a certain work we have to something we have to use different tools to, to try to separate crystals and fish and then we put it in the group and we have uh, the, the most uh, common uh, is to use cryo conditions so we have a uh, uh, 100 Kelvin here uh, because of the of, of nitrogen and the idea is we put the crystal in the path of X-ray and we have here the detector that will allow to, to see how the X-ray is scattered so do we have another type of radiation source? Yes, we have a lot. Um, what we want. Some are what we call sealed tubes are we don't have here and are less intensity and we have a simple technology but uh, usually this kind of, of, of equipment are used for small molecules that you don't need to to be too high. But I want to mention especially the simple ones. Because silicons are, although they are very expensive, they are big buildings, and, uh, but they are extremely important for structural for variation because now uh, we can solve structure, uh, we can collect data by means for crystal, and the other equipment can take days. So, and most of the structure now are being solved using information from science. science. So, and another thing is, uh, No, uh, the idea is now we have a lot of structure and uh, every, 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 we are trying to solve more difficult structures every day. So, and usually more difficult structures come with results that are or more difficult to take or smaller. So, the idea is in simple that we can go very, uh, very low uh, size of the beam and very uh, high intensity that allows to go to very, very small crystals. This is one of the, of the advantages of uh, 
And another thing is we can change the weather. Um, although I say it very quickly, this is an important, uh, important element if you want to solve the phase problem. Take data collection in different way to see to compare the, the, the refraction of different conditions. That, that will allow us to solve the phase problem. So what is the idea? We put the question here and we collect how the uh, if the, the, the variation is scattered, and here you see a, a, a diffraction pattern of a, of a protein, and we use this pattern to recreate what we see is the electron density map. So the electron density map it will be our last parameter of solving. Uh, the idea is how we go from here to here. So we know why we use a statement. The idea is why we have an electric density problem. And the idea is the heat frames are uh, waves, uh, electromagnetic waves. Uh, so we have an electric field and a magnetic field. And uh, when we put the, the, the sample, uh, and the, our crystals in, 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 in the path, we have to think that electrons are orbiting with a certain speed, uh, 100 speed of, of light. So if we consider the cycle of a, of a eighth grade wave uh, and, and, and the amount of, of, of and the movement of an electron in that cycle, the electron will move by 0 0.01 amps. So eighth grade would see the, the electron as the, as the, uh, in, in, in a still position. And also, uh, if, we, if we compare the, the, the mass of the electron and the, and the nuclear of the atom, uh, with equal frame, we will see only the electrons. The atoms are, the atomic numbers are too, too, too high the mass to, to, is, is to see a sample with this with equal frame. So the idea is uh, if you put the, 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 the sample in the equal frame, the, the, the electron will start to move with the same frequency of the equal frame. Because of the plastic component, and, and the idea is the, the electron will start to, to, to move because of a small mass in, in the same uh, in the same frequency. And if you put a, a, a charge in an oscillation, we will have a constant. So the idea is every electron in the crystal will, will start to be a, a constant. We start to emit radiation in other in other directions. And if you remember from school, we can think that if we, if we add all the, the, all the electrons, the, 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 if we add all the, the, the scattering that each electrons are generating or producing, if we add all the, all the, the wave of, of this resultant electron, we can add and and see what happens. But we, at the end, what we have is sometimes we have complete construction, sometimes we have destructive uh, uh, interference, and the idea is how we get information from this. So we will remember that crystals are a motive and a that is we see as crystal as an axiom amplified, but we have a drawback is that for the interference. Because if you put too many proteins in, 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 in different orientation, all order and the same orientation, we will have an interference pattern. It's what we see here. So it is an easy way to see it. You can have some parts of the of, of, of detector we have seen and some parts are not. And this is because of positive, completely positive or negative interference. And we have this pattern of spots in the, the detector, that means that some regions of the detector can, you can see the signal and some regions you can not. And this is not a property in which part of the detector we can see something and which part we cannot. It not depends on the structure of the model. It depends on the data. So if you have two completely different proteins, you have probably the same distribution of, of, of points in the detector. 
but the intensity will change. So the idea is uh, the, the, where we see the, uh, the, the, the spots, the spectrum, is information of how the molecules are arranged in the space. But information of how is the molecule is how is the intensity of each spot. And the other thing is each spot will have information of all the rest. So we, we, we cannot say that we can measure this part and say, well, the rest is not important. We need all the all the all the spots for the maximum spot as possible to solve this structure. So when we when we are collecting data, we have to here we have the crystal, we have to rotate the crystal and take pictures every one angle, for example. And we collect the information of you know, in all orientations. And this will be our information our data that we will so remember that uh, this is what we measure, and each one of these we call it reflection. Um, we will see why we call it reflection, but each reflection we have information about what the structure and how the model is. So why do we call it reflection? This is because of the theory of the development of Bragg in 1950 that that uh, they think of, of, of the diffraction experiment like a reflection. And the idea is if you have uh, two positions in the crystal, there is a lot that you uh, to see when you will have diffraction and when you don't. And that's the reason why you have a uh, preference bar. And it depends only on the lattice of the crystal. If you cause the, the wave, then you will travel different distance depending on the, on the, on the angle you can see. If you change this angle, you can have completely destructive or completely constructive determinants. And that's the reason we have this pattern in the diffraction pattern. So we saw why we need a clay, why we need a crystal, and what we call it. The idea is how to go from here to here. This is perhaps the most difficult part. And sorry if I cannot spell it right, but the idea is we use a mathematical uh, formulation the Fourier Canton that allows to uh, it's more or less what the same but uh, physically in the lens is to reconstruct the image. So in the crystal, in the refraction, each reflection that we are collecting is a single wave. So each spot is, 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 is a wave. So we have we can describe these spots by wavelength amplitude and the uh, effects. But in the experiment, we know that the wavelength is the wavelength we are using. The frame. We know the amplitude, because the amplitude we will measure uh, by, sorry. We will measure because we will, by density, we will see how it's the intensity of each spot, so we will have the amplitude. But we are missing is the effects. Because if we want to, add all these waves that are uh, the detector, we have to know if they are constructed or destructed for each part of the model. So the idea is, that's the reason we, we, we lose part of the information. We only have the wavelength and the amplitude that we use in the face. So the idea is, how we solve the problem? So, uh, and how it works the Fourier transform? The idea is the Fourier transform is, is a direct mathematical operation that allows to describe a complex uh, periodical function using simple functions, simple periodic functions, periodic functions. So, for example, if you have this option, we could explain it in a simplified way with, with this wave, simple wave. If you have a, a more complex option like this, this complex function. We, we could explain if we had enough uh, simple ways to, to, re, to reduce more or less this option. And if you add more terms, you can have like this. And the idea is the many more, many more ways with, with, with the correct position we add, we will describe better this option. So we can think of the electron density in a crystal as a very complex periodical function. If you remember, the crystal is a motive and a lattice. So we can think of the electron density 
be dark, will be like a periodic function, although it will be complex, it will be repeated in that direction. So if we have enough, if we have enough simple wavelength, we should reproduce the, the, the electron density. The important thing is the number of wavelengths we use. So and that's the reason we have to add all, all we have to collect and, 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 and use all the spot of the reflection we can detect the refraction. So the idea is here is, is the Vietnam form of the electric density is a mathematical iteration of here's a vector, it's not important from the effect. The idea is this is our the wave of the, the simple wave that we will have. And the idea is uh, every point in the detector is a wave, so because the reflection we have to add everything. We have the problem of the phase, and uh, if, if you think we have this is the volume of the unit, this is the amplitude or proportional to the amplitude we can measure detecting each spot. So what we are missing is the phase. So we have to use this, we have to get this information from something. And uh, so there are three forms or three ways to solve the problem. One is molecular replacement. This was uh, Michael Rossman proposing that if we have a, a molecule that is very similar to our molecule. We, we can use this information uh, uh, because if you have a molecule, you can uh, which will be the phases of each, uh, how this will produce a, a theoretical fraction and, and, and see which phases. So the, 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 the big problem here is to put the, the molecule in the correct orientation and, and, and location of the crystal. So this is perhaps the easiest, or sometimes can be very difficult, depend, but uh, if, if we know a structure, it's very straightforward. And the, the only problem is we have to put it in the exact position, and the structure and the molecule have to be very similar. If you have a molecule with uh, different, with very, very different, this will be one more. And then we have different uh, experimental <coughs> facing, what we call. This is what uh, Max Perutz in the 53 proposed. It is put the crystals, diffract the crystals of the molecule, and then diffract it with a, a, a heavy atom, for example, platinum or mercury, etc. If, if we measure both diffractions, we have to see, we could detect difference between two, the two diffractions. And by comparing, we can estimate. Uh, where are the heavy atoms in the crystal and having this information we can uh, regenerate the phases of the, of the whole structure. And this is probably nowadays the most the most used is to for example put selenium methylene in the crystal in the protein so you can express your pro recombinant protein in the presence of selenium methylene and, and with all your proteins or, or more proteins have uh, selenium methylene and if you measure the, the crystal you can have what we call anomalous refraction. It's not easy to find a few seconds, but the idea is you will uh, have information of where are those heavy metals, heavy atoms in the crystal. And if you have both can you have the position of the heavy atom, uh, it's, it's, it's simpler because it's the same as what uh, Bragg or all the scientists do when they work with small molecules. Finding the, the correct solution for a few atoms is very easy. You can do it by, 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 by just by, by looking at the refraction. I made it some refraction. The problem is we have thousands of atoms, so it's to be more complicated. So once you have the phases, you can you perform the Fourier transform, and you will have the experimental data, the electron density. So, uh, how we interpret? Well, usually if you have very good maps and you are a bit uh, trained to do this, you can see what it means in the electron density map. So, this is three dimensions. <coughs> we use programs to see this, but 
uh, here you can see it, this is a, a beta sheet. It's very clear. And if you look at uh, alpha hills, it's also very, very easy to, to, to see how to build a model that will explain this electron So, uh, probably the last part is just to comment about uh, model validation. So, you will produce a model, an atomistic model that will explain the electron density, and then we have some, uh, some, uh, some uh, correlation of efficiencies and, 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 and different statistics to try to see if, if, if the, the model explains the, 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 the electron density, but you also have to be careful that the model has to be chemically uh, correct. So uh, the idea is, if you build a model, you have to, you don't have a lot of chemistry. So, so if you have something that's not uh, common, you have to be very careful and try to see why it's not uh, as, as you expect. So you have to think of the uh, look at the chemical parameters, on them, angles, the errors, and all that. Just to be careful and see that your model is as correct as you, as, as, as you think. And if it's not correct, some research you have to see the electron density in, the, in that part of the problem. And the electron density will really say if your model, if your model is correct or not. So for example, if, if you have some part of the problem is away from the from the rat from a channel of and a layer, if you look at the electron density map, and the electron density map says that it said that your rescue is in the correct position, well you have an outlier and you can try to see if it's the surrounding why you have that. But the electron density map will be your guy. And well, the last thing is about the resolution. I even told the idea is we can have different resolution in, in, in the refraction. And the resolution is how, how the amount of information we can collect. So high resolution, high from uh, experimental information we, we can collect and, and measure. And the idea is what changes in different resolution is how is the density uh, defined. So with, with high resolution, we start with, with higher, more than 1.5, we start to, to see how the atoms are put, put into this space. So we can start to discriminate between atoms. And we have low resolution because of, we know that how the amino acids are, how, how, how are the amino acids, we can have a very good guess of the position of the atom. And we're very, very precisely, but probably you won't see the electron density map uh, of each other. You will see like a, a small graph. So, and if you go to, to, to low resolution, you start to be, for example, at four atom, most of the of the sites you won't see it correct. But the idea is with high resolution, you will see more precise and more precise the electron density map, you will have a better model.
Yeah, I wonder if you can you could comment on how long does it take to analyze a full data set? Uh, depend, and, and depending on the, the, the kind of information you have, it has to start from scratch, like no phases and stuff, and if you go through molecular replacement. Well, uh, and how much human input is needed in there? For you're collecting your data in the computer lab and you can solve it uh, before you finish the data collection. So sometimes it's extremely fast and it will depend on the quality of the data. So it can be very easy. Uh, what, how about the need to have a completely totally unknown structure? So, uh, so in your structure and, and you get the diffraction data and you need to solve the thing. If you, have you, you, you need their human intervention, it will go automatically. Well, nowadays, you can have completely automated, okay. so six parts. Okay, good. But usually, if you have really good data, anomalous data, or, or experimental, for experimental phasing, you can do it in half an hour, you have the okay. first experimental. Analysis is not the time limit. Eh? Analysis is not the right thing. No, no, nowadays with the computers, it's pretty fast. When you do molecular replacement, how big or how small are the, the pieces that you use? Well, that's the tricky part of molecular replacement because uh, it will depend how, how many molecules are in there. Unit. So perhaps you have uh, one molecule in a symmetric unit and you have a, a molecule that's very similar, so you have to place only one molecule in the correct position. So it's one search and it's very easy if the molecule is very similar. If you have, I don't know, 10 molecules, you will have to put one molecule at the time. And usually that's a bit more tricky because the, the, the signal they versus uh, noise would be uh, low, but it's possible if the model is correct. If you have a, a, a model that is not so good, you start to be to have problems because the, 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 the correct solution would be more difficult to find. And also, if you have, for example, if you have a lot of cases like that, but if you have the same model, but it's a, it's a flexible protein, uh, probably you not say the same the solve the structure and use the same confirmation. You have to use part of the molecule because if one crystal will be in this position and the other will be in this position. So if you use the same you have done. And what happens if you go wrong with that? I mean if you if you replay you, you do the wrong molecular place, you get something which you can immediately tell it's not working or maybe you yes. get wrong and, uh, and you're trying to pick something where there's nothing. If, the molecule, if, if you have a solution, if the molecule is if the same molecule and is in the difference in the position, okay. you, you won't see a clear cut solution. And that's very clear. If you have a model is not so good, sometimes you, is, you can be. Well, what you get? You get a. a you you a, will a see electron density. If if I, a field density demand, but if the, the idea is you will see electron density demand. So. And it won't make sense. Yeah, not, not only what made, made sense. That, but you have to, when you do the molecular replacement, you can calculate the electron density map. You will have obviously your model because molecular replacement you are putting a model. But you have to see something new. For example, if your model has a tyrosine in one position and here in your structure that you are trying to solve is anatomy, this, this, the electron density map should say that this is not the correct analysis. Depends on the resolution you are Depends on the resolution, but usually, for example, you can, uh, you always use the, uh, as a search for uh, a molecule of something similar, you would cut all the regions that you, know, you, you expect to be different. For example, loops that are on the surface, you can cut it. But you have to see something new. If you don't see something, it's probably not. Could you briefly comment uh, the relationship between the actual uncertainty in the atomic positions and resolution at B factor? Okay. 
many times we, we crystallize the protein and then we will become soap. So we put the crystals in a, in a solution with the inhibitor and the, and the inhibitor goes because we, well, we saw it that we have big channels of salt. So the, the inhibitors enter the crystals and, and we can diffract the crystal with and without the inhibitor. And it's very easy. Uh, sometimes the inhibitor affects the crystallization. So you put the crystal in the middle of the crystal dissolved. And you have to crystallize in another condition or co crystallize, maybe complex and then crystallize. It will depend on each case. I have another question about the nanobodies. Um, what is the, the effect of the nanobodies in the, the crystallization? Well, I think it's now it's, they, they are, they are, they are, uh, there are many more examples of, of, of successful uh, examples of nanobodies used. They are used especially for microcosm. So AAs nanobodies would bind from a specific way to your protein and in a way, they will help not only to, uh, because usually nanobodies are very well for sensation, so you will have uh, a number of, 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 of small surfaces that will be easy to crystallize, but also it will uh, help in what we call pure protein. If you have protein is flexible, perhaps the nanobody will help to maintain a, 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 a uniform conformation. So you can have both. Have no pulse effects to have the sensation. Something is very good.